Uh, my name is David Parry. I look after the South East Health Technologies Alliance. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all here today to talk about academic health science networks. And I'm pleased that we've got representation from four of our academic health science networks in the South East. Kent, Surrey, Sussex, Oxford, South London and Wessex. And you'll be hearing more about those. Before I start, just a very quick overview of where we are in SATA, because as you probably realise, certainly from the publicity we've given you, and probably having been to one or two of these events before, that we positioned ourselves very firmly at the sort of centre of ABC, academia, <laughs> business and care and clinicians. And I do think that's where HSNs should be, at that sweet spot, trying to bring people together, because they're obviously other agendas with academics, papers, other agendas with business, which is principally profits, and of course the clinicians amongst you will have patients very dear to your heart. But I think we've got to start working together for everybody's benefit in a slightly different way, perhaps in a transformed way. And I just want to start with a, a story, which I quite like this story. It's a true story, uh, which might help um, set the scene a little bit more. There's a very busy road in the US called um, the Capitol Beltway around Washington. And it was especially busy around one particular junction at one particular time. And nobody could quite understand it. The traffic planners were really getting frustrated about this. It all jammed up until some very observant driver found that this was associated with one particular driver who drove on at this particular junction and went in the what is the overtaking lane and stuck his car on cruise control at 55 and would not move despite people flashing and tailgating and being incredibly rude. And they found out from the plate that this was a guy called John Nestor. John Nestor. And this turned into a bit of a local issue in Washington. It were letters in the paper about this chap who wouldn't move and there was debate about it, and he finally replied to these letters, um, saying, well, why should I inconvenience myself for someone who wants to speed? Fair enough, I guess. And there was a, there was a term coined for this um, sticking to the rules, closely sticking to the rules, called nestering. This is all true. Look it up on Google. Nestering. So, at the time, and this is in the 80s, the um, Federal Drug Administration, the FDA, got a bit of a reputation of being a little bit inflexible when it came to approving new drugs. There didn't seem to be any room for any risks at all. And it turned out that this man, John Nestor, wasn't just a metaphor for the FDA. He actually worked in the FDA. And in his career which spanned over 20 years, he had never approved a drug. And he worked in the uh, cardiorenal pulmonary unit. So was John Nestor a hero or a villain? Was he a hero or a villain? Because it was said of him by some people that he had an unassailable record of protecting the public from harmful drugs. But, at what price? At what price to those who needed access to new drugs? Well, the end of this story is when John Nestor died in 1999. Interestingly, he died of cancer of the kidneys, and that was an area that he was actually responsible for approving new drugs in the FDA. Hmm. So that begs the question, really, doesn't it? Our approach to this, because... I guess if we're from industry, or even from the NHS, we've got to look at the cost of getting involved with this, haven't we? The cost of getting involved with something, I think, that is the only show in town at the moment, which is trying to bring industry, academia, and the NHS together. What's the cost of involvement? Or I would say, probably, what's the risk or the cost of not getting involved? Now today we're going to be hearing from, I'm pleased to say, some of the managing directors designate from 
uh, our AHSNs. And I will tell you, because I'm quite close to the Kent Series 61, that this is still a fairly fluid, flexible thing. There is a chance for us to influence the way this is going. And I believe, personally, with my industry hat on, that perhaps we do need to influence it even more in terms of wealth creation, because this is a challenge for people in the NHS, a real challenge. So we have an opportunity now of getting involved. Perhaps we can persuade the NHS about taking a few more risks, but I think now is the time to do it, because the process is ongoing. We're reaching stages of interviews and discussions and business plans. So I hope you're going to engage with these people. Yeah, give them your worst. Tell them what you think. Be constructive, be positive, and they are genuinely listening. They are genuinely listening.